The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply valuable milk nutrients. And what's more, it's as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow... Get Velveeta, the cheese food of craft quality. There's one thing you can be sure of at the great Gildersleeve's house. When Bertie the cook stands at the foot of the stairs in the morning and calls... Breakfast! By golly, she gets action. The family is downstairs and busy at the breakfast table before you can say, pass the parquet. And that's where they are right now. The great man at the head of the table, flanked on one side by his nephew, Leroy, and on the other by his niece, Marjorie. Leroy, for goodness sakes, you don't have to stab at your grapefruit. I'm getting the juice out. <laughs> well, watch it, Leroy. That last squirt nearly got me. Uh, Leroy, hold the spoon on the opposite side of the grapefruit. Point it towards you. Oh, yeah? Then I get squirted. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Such table manners. Anki, why don't you make him eat like a human being? After all... Leroy, sit up and eat right. You're annoying your sister. Yeah, well, she isn't making things very rosy for me, either. <laughs> yes. Little brothers. Ugh. Pay no attention to him, Marjorie. That'll be a pleasure. Yeah, that'll be a pleasure. <laughs> That's enough, Leroy. I had a wonderful time at the dance last night, Anki. You did? It was out at the country club, and the decorations were just out of this world. All maple leaves and pumpkins and corn stalks, and the band was perfect. Yeah, good. Hey, Uncle, they got a motorbike down at Hogan Brothers. It's got a real motor on it. Yeah, I saw it sitting out in front of the store. Pretty tricky. Sugar Murphy was there in an evening gown, if you can imagine it, Unky. An evening gown at a sport dance. Well, well. I bet I can ride it, Uncle. It's easy. You think so? Well, handling a motorbike is no sense, Leroy. You gotta know how to ride those things. It's not like a bicycle. I danced every dance with Bronco, and was she burning? Yeah, those motors get pretty hot. <laughs> what? Huh? I mean, she did, eh? Well, <laughs> served her right. Who? Who? Uh, well, whatever her name was, uh, Candy Hogan. It was Sugar Murphy, and you weren't even listening. Excuse me. Marjorie, wait. Pete's sake, what's wrong with her? Uh, Finish with your grapefruit, Mr. Gill, please. Uh, I guess so, Bertie. Wonder what's the trouble with Marjorie. If you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Gill, Steve, I know what the trouble is. You do? Miss Marjorie needs somebody she can talk girl talk with. Who? Miss Marjorie's a young lady now, and she wants to talk girl talk. She don't want to talk about no motorcycle. She wants to talk girl talk. Girl talk, eh? Miss Marjorie feels left out, that's what. Ain't nobody interested in what she's talking about. Nobody cares what she's doing. But... You know what Miss Marjorie needs, Miss Gilsey? What, Bertie? She needs a mother. A mother? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're right, Bertie. I haven't been very understanding toward Marjorie. She does need a mother. You gonna get married, Doc? Leroy? <laughs> You take your toast and jam and run along to school. Okay, so long, huh? So long. Bertie, I've neglected my duty to Marjorie. I didn't realize I'd have to be a mother, too. No, sir. Well, by George, I can do it. Yes, sir. I'll take care of it, Bertie. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> Marjorie, come down, my dear. Finish your breakfast. I'm not hungry. Oh, come along now. Leroy's gone. You and I are going to have a nice little chat over our coffee. What do you want to talk about? Oh, just chit-chat. You know, girl talk. Come on. Tell me all about that dance last night. Oh, you're not interested, Anki. Yes, I am, my dear. You're like my own little girl. And after all, I was a... Well, I was a boy. But I knew a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah. 
Now tell me about the dance. Well, it was terrific, Unky. You know Tiger Watson. He's the tall boy with that beautiful wavy hair. Yes. Well, Tiger tried to cut in on Bronco and me at least three different times, and Bronco wouldn't let him. Well, guess you wouldn't want to dance with a tiger anyway. <laughs> well, he's a beautiful dancer. He is? Well, good. This is interesting. And, <laughs> and then Gladys Feltzer came along, and you should have seen the look she gave him. Gave him a real look. Huh? Uh-huh. And you can't blame Tiger for not dancing with her. Who? Gladys. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Gladys Watson. Uh, no, Gladys Fetzler. Uh, Watson is Tiger. Tiger Watson. Oh, certainly. Uh, Tiger gave Gladys that look. No, Unky. Uh, Gladys gave Tiger the look when Gladys came in. That's right. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> Gladys is the one with the wavy hair. No, Tiger has the wavy hair. Doesn't Gladys have anything? <laughs> oh, let's give up. I know you're trying to be kind, Uncle Mort, but it won't work. You don't have to pretend just for me. Marjorie, please, Marjorie. The girl talk. Uh, I sure botched that up. Shame on you, Gildersleeve. A fine mother you turned out to be. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Bessie. You're late this morning, Miss Gildersleeve. Yes, sir. I've been running the water department all by myself since nine o'clock. It's a quarter after nine now. That fifteen minutes. Lightning calculation. Pretty tiring for a girl to handle an office like this all alone for a quarter of an hour. Telephone been busy? No, nobody called. People been in? No, nobody was in. Then what happened? Nothing. But, but I had to be ready in case something did happen. Oh, for heaven's sake. I've been sitting here like a mouse at a cat hole. A mouse at a cat All right, Bessie. Get out the water bills. Let's go to work. Yes, sir. Bessie, you're a girl. Yes, I am. <laughs> Bessie, if you wanted your mother to do something nice for you, what would you want her to do? Well, let's see. I think it's always nice when Mother buys me something, like a surprise. Well, like you know. Yeah, maybe that's a thought. A very feminine little gift of some kind might cheer Marjorie up no end. It's simple, but after all, it's the simple things that count. Watch the office, Bessie. I'll be right back. But Mr. Gildersleeve, you just got here. Bessie, you haven't seen me this morning. I haven't been in yet. <laughs> that's funny. I'm sure he was here. <laughs> May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, you may, young lady. I'm looking for a gift. Uh, something rather nice. For a lady? Uh, yes, it's for a young lady. <laughs> I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Been reading too many Esquires. Well, now, perfume is always a nice gift. See how you like this fragrance. <laughs> no, this young lady is my niece. Oh. <laughs> Well, maybe she'd like a nice pair of gloves or an attractive leather-bound address book. Well, they don't sound very exciting. Seems to me I've heard something about hats. Say, when a woman wants to give her spirits a lift, she goes out and buys a hat. Hi, right, George, that's it. Young lady, where's the hat department? Hat? Over this way. I don't know what size she wears. I'll have to sort of guess at it. Now, uh, what type of hat did you have in mind? Well, something bright and rather jolly. Well, I don't know if we have any jolly hats... Uh, now, if you want something gay, I might suggest this little number. Oh, here, I'll put it on so you can see how it looks. There. Do you, uh, like it? Where is it? <laughs> oh. Well, it's, uh, it's worn on the back of the head. There, you see? Oh, well, don't you have one she could wear on the front of her head? <laughs> she meets quite a few people. Here's a very smart little tam she might like. No, that's too flat on the top. Don't you have a hat with something on it? Some uh, decorations? Decorations? Well, uh, berries and things. Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, let me see. Perhaps up on the back of this shelf here, there used to be... Oh, I think I may just have what you're looking for. Good. <laughs> uh, pretty dusty back there. Well... A hat's in this box. I'm sure it's in good condition. We only took it out once. 
Oh, there it is. Well, now that's more like it. Yes, sir. Very pretty. Yes, it's uh, quite a hat. Sure, that's got something to it. I'll take that one. How much is it? Would a dollar eighty-five be too much? <laughs> no, no, no. That sounds quite reasonable. Wrap it up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, Marjorie's eyes will sure light up when she sees that. There's nothing difficult about understanding a girl like Marjorie. If you put a little thought to it, give a woman a new hat and she's a queen. The simple, lovable creatures. You, <laughs> 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 Marjorie. You keep out of this, Leroy. This is Marjorie's surprise. What is it, Unky? Uh, brought something for you, my dear. Oh, Uncle Mord, what is it? It's a little surprise, just for you. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a big box. Doesn't feel very heavy. Leroy. <laughs> May I open it now, Unky? By all means, my dear. It's for you. I uh, picked it out myself. Oh, it's a hat. Yeah. <laughs> a hat? Let's see it, Marge. Yeah. Pretty tricky, don't you think? Oh, brother. <laughs> well, how do you like it? Oh, it's... it's lovely, Yankee. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. Put it on, Marge. Yeah, put it on, my dear. Let's see how you look at it. Well, I should have my hair pinned up. Put it on, Marge. Sure, we'll have a beauty parade right here in the living room. Leroy, get that cat off the mantel so she can see herself in the mirror. <laughs> All right, I'll put it on. Yes, sir, perfect fit. <laughs> What's so funny? That hat. <laughs> With the plums hanging down in back. Don't you listen to him, my dear. He's just jealous. And the radishes are on the edge. <laughs> Leroy, those are cherries. What, no whipped cream? <laughs> that's enough of your crude humor. Marjorie, that's a stunning hat. Oh, Uncle. <laughs> Marjorie, you, you forgot your hat. Well... There she goes again. <laughs> Leroy, you and your big mouth. My big mouth is this hat. <laughs> this is like nothing I ever saw. What? No kidding. Mom, did you buy this for Marge to wear? I most certainly did. What do you suppose I bought it for? I thought you got it for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke, look here. It's even got a bird on it. <laughs> All right, it's a miniature peacock. It's a good-looking bird. You call me, Miss Gilkey? Uh, no, Bertie. Miss Marjorie, go upstairs? Yes, Bertie. What you holding behind your back? Uh, nothing. Oh. How you getting along, Miss Gilkey? You making the grade? Not yet, but I will. A lot of people are mothers. Plenty of them. I can be just as good a mother as the next fella. <laughs> Here's a question and a really helpful answer for you women who have to whip up a meal in a hurry. Do you know the easy way to make gloriously rich, smooth cheese sauce with Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta? Once you catch on to this Velveeta trick, you can turn out a grand main dish or swell party refreshments in a matter of minutes. And easy Velveeta cheese sauce is the golden key to glamorizing vegetables and leftovers, too. Now, here's the trick that's easy as one, two, three. One... Melt a half a pound of golden Velveeta in the top of the double boiler. Two, stir in a fourth of a cup of milk. Three, well, that's for you to decide. If it's a hearty main dish you need, toss cooked rice or seafood or macaroni into that velvet smooth cheese sauce. Or leftover ham or chicken. If it's a supper party you want to serve, pour the elegant sauce over toast points and sprinkle with a few shredded toasted almonds. And do try that sauce to glamorize the family's vegetables. Do you see what a help that Velveeta sauce trick can be? Well, then buy Kraft's famous Velveeta in the economical two-pound size that keeps you stocked for snacks and sandwiches and grand cheese sauce dishes, too. Tomorrow, get genuine Velveeta, Kraft's famous cheese food that's such a help to you.
Now, back to the great Gildersleeve. Being like a father to his niece Marjorie came pretty easy for the great man. But now that he's faced with providing the motherly touch as well, it's a little more difficult. He's having trouble thinking like a mother. Marjorie's happiness is at stake. By George, I'll learn it. I figured out canasta. <laughs> at least he isn't giving up. Uh-oh, there he goes up to the walk to his new girlfriend, Katie Milford's house. Catherine ought to be able to give me some tips. After all, she's a nurse. And nurses are pretty smart. Wonder if I should have brought her some candy. Now, this is a professional call. Almost. Well, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. Come on in. I didn't expect to see you tonight. Well, the truth of the matter is, Catherine, a little emergency has come up. Somebody ill? No, no. Everybody's fine. Just fine. Oh. Well, what is it, Throckmorton? Well, there's a problem at our house, Catherine. I thought possibly you might... Certainly. I'll do anything I can. Yeah, I knew you would. What's the problem? Well, Marjorie needs a mother. Throckmorton! Huh? No, no, that's not what I meant. I mean... Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Throckmorton, you're blushing. Yeah, this shirt collar's kind of (laughs) tight. Must have shrunk in the wash. Yes. (laughs) Say, you're blushing, too. I'm not even. You are, too. Well, what were you saying? Uh, Oh, let's see. Got to find another way to say it now. Well, I know what you mean. Marjorie's reached the age where she needs the sympathy and understanding of a mother. That's precisely the problem. I can handle it all right. I can just find out how it's done. Right now, I'm a little new at it. (laughs) Have you tried winning Marjorie's confidence? Yeah. I bought her a hat. A hat. Oh, Throckmorton. Yeah, I know it. I gave it to the bulldog across the street. (laughs) Now he's mad at me, too. (laughs) Poor Throckmorton. There must be something I can do. What would a mother do for a girl Marjorie's age? Well, I'll tell you what would be a very nice thing to do, and I think Marjorie would love you for it. What's that? Some afternoon, give a tea for her. Zeke. Well, that's what a mother would do. Invite her friends in for afternoon tea. That sounds like a woman, all right. Come to think of it, Marjorie has a birthday coming up. I could give her a tea birthday party. By George, that's not a bad idea. You'd like me to help? I'd yeah, be more Thanks, than... Catherine, but all I needed was the idea. I'll carry the ball from here. I'll give a tea party for Marjorie tomorrow afternoon. Aren't you rushing it a little? No, sir. Marjorie's pretty upset about that hat. i got to work fast. On the way home, I'll stop at the store and pick up a pound of orange pico. Leroy, get out that ice cream. Oh, just tasting it. How's it coming, Bertie? Uh, got the tea on? Oh, I'll take care of the tea. You just leave this end to me, Mr. Gilsleeve. Leroy, get out that ice cream. <laughs> Seems like you've got an awful lot of cakes and sandwiches here, Bertie. After all, this isn't an elk's banquet. Oh, I know what I'm doing, Mr. Gilsley. When you give one these teas, you got to give it. Miss Marjorie's just swooning. She's so happy about this. First tea she ever had. I'm going to shoot the works. I'm going all out. Leave her, get out that ice cream. <laughs> well, I, uh, I hope uh, you know what you're doing, Bertie. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'll take care of this end. You just take care of that end. Yeah, but Bertie. Don't but Bertie me now. I got this whole thing rolling. I'll take care of this end. You take care of that end. <laughs> This in, that in. Leroy, get out that ice cream. <laughs> Come out of the kitchen, Leroy. <laughs> okay. What kind of ice cream is it? Strawberry pistachio and tutti frutti. Oh, this thing's getting out of hand. Hi, Unky. How do I look? Oh, you look lovely, my dear. You sure do, Marge. Just like a big scoop of tutti frutti ice cream. <laughs> Leroy, don't you start anything. Uncle Morty, it was sweet of you to plan all this for me. It's the one thing I've always wanted. Well, it's not much. Everything's ready in the living room. Oh, I'm so excited, Unky. Uh, be calm, my dear. You're the hostess, you know. I don't understand how you did it, Uncle Mort. You must have been planning this for weeks. No, no. Just started yesterday, in fact. But how could you get all the invitations out? Invitations? Well... well you must have sent out invitations. They always do. Yeah, there you are, Marjorie. Your guests are beginning to arrive. I'll see who it is. Leroy, you go upstairs. Disappear someplace. <laughs> do I look all right, Uncle? You look fine, my dear. Now, run to the door. Well, here goes. Well, hello, Marjorie. Happy birthday. Mr. Well, hello, Phoebe. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. Come on in, Phoebe. Thank you. 
And Marjorie, may I extend felicitations on this joyous occasion with this two-pound box of chocolates? Oh, thank you. A fresh shipment just came from the drugstore yesterday. The cherry sandwiches are very good, quite juicy. <laughs> Uncle Mort, was he invited? Certainly. Mr. Peavy's one of my oldest friends. Better go to the door, my dear. Another guest. Well, hiya, Marge. Happy birthday. Mr. Munson. In the flesh. Well, hello, Floyd. Hi, Commish. Won't you come in? You bet your life. Well, and there's the Peeve. Hiya, Peeve. <laughs> hello, Floyd. How do you like that, Peavy? First one at the party. <laughs> come early and stay late, huh, Peavy? Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Gentlemen, sit down. Oh, wait, I got a birthday present for you, Marge. Here. Thank you. That's a great thing, Marge, a genuine redwood burl. You put it in water and the darn thing sprouts. That sounds wonderful. Honky. Yes? Who'd you invite to this tea? Uh, well, here's another one arriving, Marjorie. I'm afraid to look. Greetings, Marjorie. Oh, Judge Hooker. Many happy returns today, my dear. Thank you, Judge. Well, hello, Horace. Come on in. Hello, Gilda. And there's Peavy. Good to see you. How are you, Judge? Oh, and Floyd Munson, all dressed up for the party, huh, Floyd? You betcha. It ain't every day little Floyd he gets invited to a tea. How about it, Mars? Do I have to crook my little finger, huh? No. Marjorie, my dear, I can see tears in your eyes. Tears of joy on this happy occasion. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll be right back. Marjorie, wait. What's wrong, my dear? What have I done? Nothing, only... Didn't you invite anybody else? I didn't know anybody else. <laughs> oh, Unky. I thought Judge Hooker and Mr. Peavy and Floyd were our friends. Oh, sure, it's all right. Now, who's that? Everybody's here. You want to go to the door, Uncle Morris? Yes, I'll go. Hello. 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 I'm Gracie Gilmore, and this is Judy Webster. Is this the Gildersleeve residence? Yes. We were invited to tea for Marjorie this afternoon. Oh? Oh, is it, Unky? Gracie, Judy. Hi, Marge. Hi, Marge. Well, come on in. Hey, we're early, I guess. The rest of the girls are on the way, though. The rest of the girls? Sure. Maxie Malone, Phyllis Hersey, the whole gang from school. Hey, what's this? Well, come on, girls. I'll introduce you later. Yeah, okay, well, hey, Commish. Yes, what? Yeah. Uh, hey, Commish. You didn't say anything about a lot of girls at this party. That's right, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not sure Mrs. Peavy would approve. <laughs> now, look, There's fellas. something peculiar going on here, Gildy. This affair is taking on a very feminine atmosphere. Well, uh, and that's to be expected. I have a little problem. You see, Marjorie doesn't have... Well, I've been trying to fill in as a mother. What? And it's not easy. <laughs> my, my. Come to a tea, he said. Now it's turning into a hen party. <laughs> this keeps up. I'm going to take my redwood boil and go home. <laughs> now, wait a minute, fellas. These girls came out of thin air. I don't know who invited them. Well, now, isn't it customary for a young girl to have other young girls at a tea party? Seems I recall something like that. You're right, Peavy, but how was I to know? Well, you couldn't be expected to. You've never been a mother before. Yeah. <laughs> Better stand back, fellas. This is probably the girls. Hello, Throckmorton. Oh, Catherine, come on in. Can't do it, thanks. I'm in a hurry. How's the party coming? Well, apparently it's going to be starting soon. There's a dozen giggling college girls due here any minute. I don't even know who invited them. Uh, I'll have to confess, Throckmorton. I did. You did? Wasn't that awful of me? But I checked with Bertie and, well, sometimes men don't understand these things. You can say that again. <laughs> I have to run. Bye, Throckmorton. Goodbye, Catherine. Lady genius. Oh, Uncle Mort, you had this whole thing planned. I did? I mean, sure I did. <laughs> well, you knew all the girls were coming all the time. Uncle Mort, aren't you ashamed? Should I be? Hey, there the girls are. Oof. Unky, you're wonderful. Yes, yes, come on, Judge. Floyd, Peavy, let's get out of the bowling alley. I think that's a good idea, Gildy. Right into the kitchen, Judge. We can go out the back door. Thank you, Gildy. Go right ahead, Peavy. Thank you. Floyd? After you, Mother. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back again in just a minute. When you mothers discover a nutritious bodybuilding food the kids really go for, that's a find, isn't it? And when it's a snack food, you're doubly lucky. Well, mother, you are in luck. Just discover Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta. 
Every time you let the youngsters spread or slice that swell-eating Velveeta, you're giving them fine nutrients from milk. Yes, Velveeta helps supply milk protein for strong muscles, milk minerals for sound teeth and bones, milk vitamins needed for growth. And that Velveeta the children like so much is okay for a snack anytime because it's digestible as milk itself. So be a smart mother and keep plenty of their favorite snack and sandwich food on hand. That's genuine Velveeta, the nutritious cheese food made only by Kraft. Birdie. Down at the bowling alley. Well, I thought I'd drop back for a minute, Bertie, and see if everything is all right. I don't want to butt in. Oh, it's going fine. Why don't you go in and join the party? No, they don't want me in there. I think I'll... <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Anki. Come on in and meet the girls. No, I don't want to. Oh, please, Anki. No. Come on. No. Girls... This is my uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Whoa! Why didn't you tell us you had such a good-looking yeah. uncle, Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> Next to me, Mr. Gildersleeve. No, he's going to sit next to me. Yeah. Uncle, you aren't going back to the bowling alley, are you? I should say not. I can go bowling any day. Somebody pour me a saucer of tea. Uh, <laughs> right. Here are the third and fourth week's winners in the great Gildersleeve's Name My Song contest, which ended last Saturday night. Third week's winners of $1,000 cash prizes are Mrs. H.H. H. Caldwell, Jackson, Georgia, G.G. G. Gunn, Victoria, B.C., Canada, Mrs. Thomas Brubaker, Brookville, Pennsylvania, Mrs. Ruby Ann Griffin, Denison, Iowa. And in the fourth week's contest, four $1,000 prizes are awarded to Marianne Gahan, San Antonio, Texas, Edna T. Storier, Syracuse, New York, Mrs. Willis A. Varner, Osceola, Nebraska. Miss Maud Hawley, Central Point, Oregon. Other third and fourth week winners will be notified by mail. Next week, we'll announce the four $1,000 winners in the fifth week's contest. The grand prize of $5,000 extra has yet to be determined. The contest, remember, closed at midnight last Saturday. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. And now, the Kraft Foods Company wishes you to hear this special message. Mr. Perry. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen... Mr. J.L. Kraft, founder of our company, has asked me to bring you this personal message from him. Mr. Kraft says, During the time from now on until Thanksgiving Day, all of us will hear about a special campaign by 20 national religious bodies to bring to the people of this great land a reminder of the importance of religion in our American life. Our country was founded on the principle of religious freedom, and throughout our history, our religious institutions have been the firm cornerstone of our progress toward a fuller, richer life. This month, we are urging everyone to re-examine the spiritual foundations of our nation as they apply to each of us individually. Attend the church of your faith. Go to your religious leader for personal guidance. Remember your church gives aid to the troubled and needy, both at home and abroad. Cooperate and work in your church in any of the dozen ways that will help. Remember that our nation can be a great nation only as long as each of us accepts his spiritual responsibilities. May I ask you to search for these responsibilities in your own hearts and to seek assistance in finding them through your own church, through the inspiration of your own religious leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kraft, for sending this inspiring message to our audience. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. This is NBC, the National...